what's up makers in this digital build it i'm going to teach you how to build a personal website this will be a two-part tutorial so stay tuned first what you're going to want to do is download visual studio code visual studio code is a free source code editor you could use atom or sublime text but i prefer visual studio code so we'll use this one for the tutorial Okay, so we're going to open up the program and download a few extensions. One of the extensions we'll download is Live Server. Live Server is a developer tool that helps make your code live in a web browser. All right, so we are also going to download Prettier. Prettier is a code formatter that will make it easier to read your code. Now, once you've downloaded the two extensions, we are going to go to Settings and change it to change Auto Save option to After Delay. This will automatically save your code after 1000 milliseconds. And I personally like this because it'll help me see updates as I'm coding. Now, of course you don't have to do this. You can also press control save and see the updates, but it's nicer not to have to worry about that. So once you've prepared Visual Studio Code to your liking, we are going to download free website templates. Um, a cool website that has a collection of these is HTML5 up and you can select one of the templates that it has and download it. Um, this will help make building a website 100 times easier because all you have to do is edit some of the code. All right, so I will be using read only um, template and uh, I'll use it to teach you how to read and edit the code. So um, once you downloaded the um, template, uh, and it's going to be held in a zip folder in your downloads. So I'm going to extract the content and put it into my build it personal website folder. All right. So we're going to head back to visual studio code, open up the folder and click on the file index HTML and make sure that you right click the code. Um, so then you can select open with live server. And now we are ready to start editing our website before we even start editing it. Let's take a deeper look into the layout. So when you're using the desktop version at full screen, there is a widget on the right that will track along your movement on the page. You can also click on these to make it easier to jump to specific content. Below are some social media icons and it's pretty much easy to go through the site. This right here is your head element. It's a container for metadata. Nearly all the information in here will not show up on your website. An exception is the title, which could be changed to your name. So if you go to the browser, you can see that it has changed to um, in the pages tab. Make sure you make this as accurate and meaningful as possible because it will be the display title in your search engine results. Okay, so now we are going to add meta tags. So when people search for specific words or phrases, your website will appear. This won't be displayed on your page and there are certain meta elements for specific reasons. Here, I decided to add the meta element description um, and use student as SDSU as its content and the meta element keywords with content such as resume, major, and San Diego student. Um, so the following section I recently highlighted is specifically for your profile widget. Here we can make changes such as your name, description, and the links to the social media icons. A good description to put is the school that you are going to and the year that you will be graduating. As you can see, our website is starting to become our own. And so if you want to attach a link to a social icon, then what you're going to do is highlight the hashtag and put in whatever link you wish to put in. All right, I decided to use Google to show you how it works. Here, um, once you click on the icon, it will immediately take you to that link. To change the profile picture, you can save an image into the image folder. I'm going to grab an image from Unsplash to use as my profile picture. Unsplash is a website where you can download stock images and photos for free. Once you have your image, you will want to rename it to a simple, easy to type name like profile. Make sure that it is saved into the image folder of the template download folder, or in my case, build it personal website. And you're going to want to change avatar to profile. That way the image will update and change to the image that you want it to be. All right, so now we are going to change the about section. 
Here you can add content such as your catchphrase or inspiring quote. Of course you don't have to and you can actually delete that part out of the code. Moving on to the next session, you can change out the icon to fit your style. Just go to Font Awesome and search for keywords that you would like to have. Font Awesome is a font and icon toolkit based on CSS. When you're on the website, you can search for specific tags for in it and change whichever tag in the code to yours. Now it's best to only use free ones and not all will work, so choose wisely. I decided to look up dog. Here I can see that dog is part of it. And so I'm going to replace code with dog. So in a few accomplishments, you can mess around with the code to provide interesting information and achievements you have. These can also be hyperlinked if you want to change uh, the hashtag in href to whatever site you wish. Of course, you don't, if you don't want it, then you can delete that href content. And at the very end, we have your contact me. Now this little form will not work. And so we're going to replace it with a hyperlink that will allow anyone who's interested in contacting you to email you. Okay, so this pretty much sums up the first half. There's a lot more to it than what I've shown you, but this tutorial was intended to be a simple introduction for anyone interested in building a personal and free website quickly. Next week, we will wrap this up by launching this on the web. See you soon.